For the past few years, I've been thinking about the way that senior engineers grow, and in reflecting on my previous jobs, I've noticed a pattern that I wanted to share with you. I think this pattern and this phenomenon happens organically, and it may be the key to growing as an engineer. I call this pattern that I've noticed the wizard paradox, and in this video, I want to get into what it is, why it happens, and how you can harness it for yourself. So. Let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, what is the wizard paradox? And in order to explain to you what it is, I need to tell you a small story from my second ever developer job. And at this job, there was a developer who we'll call Jason. And Jason was the all-star on the team. He is the wizard in the wizard paradox. And what made him the wizard? He got all the hardest problems and he usually solved them. Something I noticed about Jason and his skills is that he was caught up in something of a virtuous circle. He got all the hardest problems, he usually solved them, and as a result, people's trust in him grew, and so he continued to get even more hard problems, and then he would usually solve those, and the whole thing would just continue and continue, and the mythology of Jason grew exponentially. By the time I got to this job, Jason's name was said with fear and trembling and awe, and it was all because of the wizard paradox. So what is the wizard paradox in concrete terms? I would say it's momentum that you can build around your own confidence as a developer, and it's also momentum that you can build around others' perception of you as a developer. You can see both of those things in this story with Jason. His confidence was growing because he was consistently getting in front of hard problems and usually solving them, and that leads to the feeling that you can solve hard problems. And on the flip side, he was solving these problems most of the time, and so people began to trust him as someone who could get hard stuff done, and so they began to bring him more hard stuff to do. So that's what the wizard paradox is. I call it a paradox because wizards are bred, not born, but we typically think of these skills as something that you just come out of the womb with that are innate. And I'm here to tell you that that is not the case. These skills can be learned. And that brings us to our second point, which is why does this dynamic exist? Why is the wizard paradox a thing? And there are a few different reasons here. The first is cult of personality, just plain and simple. I've noticed this in several different workplaces, but we love to lift people up. We love to worship them. I think this is kind of an inherent human thing. Like we love our LeBrons. We love our Serena Williamses. We love people that are excellent at what they do. And we kind of love to put them on a pedestal. I think even more than that though, it's that people want the shortest path to solving their problems. So if you think about a product manager, for example, and there's a critical bug in the application, I'm not gonna go to the fourth best developer on the team and just hope that they can figure it out. I'm probably just gonna go straight to the best guy because I know that the odds are that he's gonna get this done. This means that there is a disproportionate pull on the best developer's time. And I've seen this play out over and over again where the best developers have a lot of people asking them for stuff. And ironically, they find it hard to get any actual development or feature work done. I think maybe the biggest reason that this phenomenon exists though is that it's a feature of skill acquisition. I know from teaching people to code and from having learned to code myself, that when you have a lot of evidence for having figured out hard problems and for figuring things out that you didn't previously know, your confidence grows, it just does. It's like the opposite of imposter syndrome and it's a really good thing. It's that virtuous circle that I've mentioned. It's the flywheel of your confidence and your skill development beginning to turn over and over. Okay, so then how to start harnessing this thing? Well, as I mentioned, it's a virtuous circle. So you need to start building momentum. And how to start building momentum? Well, you wanna start solving hard problems. So start putting your hand up at work. It's okay if you don't solve all the hard problems at first even having tried will help you develop the skills and the confidence to do so. And remember, as we've been saying, small wins lead to bigger wins. So you just need to start somewhere and get that momentum rolling. Along with seeking out hard problems, you also want to become a reliable resource for non-technical people to get their problems solved. I think this goes hand in hand with seeking out hard problems because when you seek them out and you solve them, then you will begin to gain the trust of the people around you. Then they'll start bringing you even more hard problems and you'll just get more and more opportunities to start turning that confidence flywheel and eventually become the wizard on your team. That's all for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you're still here, you probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment. So consider sticking around, but regardless, thanks so much for being here. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, 
and I'll see you in the next one.